Ramos, I have a question. My female is on day 22 of her pregnancy. I believe she might be pregnant. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but some signs also recently she was heard she contracted worms. I was wondering if it's safe to deworm her. Uh, as my understanding, it should be done after day 40, but if it's necessary, can I do it now? So let's see what the reply says here. Someone replied to it. Okay, wait for day 50, post cesarean, she is fine with worms. Uh, okay, so first off, um, look, if you want to find out whether this dog is pregnant, I'd wait till day 30 to find out whether or not she's pregnant, and then if she's not, go ahead and deworm her, so it's not even an issue. So I'd do that first. So I'd wait for another week, um, and then I'd use safeguard on her for three days. Can you use safeguard now? Well, typically we don't use safeguard till about 10 days before whelp and, 10, and seven days after whelp for three days. I've never been in a situation where I've had a dog with noticeable worms, but I mean, if you've got a dog with worms, I think you need to treat it, and safeguard supposedly is tr safe for a pregnant mother, but I think you should Google that and convince yourself that that's true. Kathy Polish, do you tie and clip the umbilical cord first, then clear the airway? So on a C-section, when the vet is doing this, what they'll do is they will pull the puppy out, they will break the umbilical sac so they can get their puppy's head out and away from it. They will put some, typically they will put uh, forceps on the umbilical cord, close to the puppy, cut it off and give you that puppy with the, umbilical, with the forceps still attached to the puppy. Some vets will Again, put some forceps on, cut the umbilical cord, and then put some uh, dental floss and, or some uh, suture material and tie it and take the, suture, take the forcep off before they give you the puppy. The puppy has not had any, taken a breath yet. I like the second option. I don't like dangling forceps that could herniate a puppy. So I much prefer that they're tied off and given to me to shake them down without having any forceps on it. But if they do have the forceps, hold the forceps close to the body and don't let those things come loose because you could herniate a puppy. But then it's your job to get them cleared. Go to the first thing to do would be to get a suction bulb, suction out any fluid you possibly can, hold them upside down, pat them, bump them around, get any fluid out. So that's your job, but the vet, the vet is worried with getting the next puppy out. The vet wants to leave your dog exposed to the atmosphere for the shortest amount of time possible. So they will typically get on with this and they are not concerned with getting the puppy breathing because that can take two, three, four, five minutes. They're on the, their job is get puppies out fast as possible, get a sewn up, get everything stuffed back inside and sew back up. That's their job and that's good. If your dog has lots of puppies and is opened up to the atmosphere for quite some time, then typically a vet probably is gonna give antibiotics because you've always got this concern that microbes and bugs that are in the air will get inside the, the dog and could cause a problem. Kathy Polish, 1389, what do you have under the corners of the PVC? Well, so the corners of the PVC are our adapters, and those adapters have a bolt running down through the corner, a diagonal, and then we supply with that pool noodles cut up that give you some kind of spongy material that goes over the bolt. And the reason for that is, is we don't want the puppy getting behind the bolt and getting stuck. A friend of mine had a litter, mum was Brindle dad, and, and had no brindle, uh, was black. A lot of it was a brindle dad. Does AA cancel that brindle? Well, that's an interesting question. I think that maybe it does. I'm not convinced of this. Um, but remember, just because dad was brindle doesn't mean that all the puppies or any of the puppies are brindle. If she's got one copy, you could all escape it. So you need to do a DNA test. So the answer is either the brindle is there or it's not. And if it's a double A dog, then maybe it's not visually there, but it still could be there. So you've got to test. Uh, Deja McCowan, how do you get blood for a sample for a PG test or for a dog? You have to draw it with a needle, and I've got videos on that. You're going to have to draw the blood. Blazing colors, how do you determine what a stud fee should be? What percentage lower would you suggest for the first few months before one is proven? Um, so, I generally, my way of going at this is to, I figure that you're, you should be charging approximately 10% of what you, the anticipate, uh, average anticipated value would be of this stud dog. Now, some people vary their stud fee based on what studs being, what females being bred because they know there's gonna be different outcomes. We don't do that, we have a fixed fee. And for that fixed fee, we just charge a thousand bucks up front and then the rest of it goes on the back end when you're ready to register litter. That's what we do. 
Um, but anyway, um, sorry, my phone's doing silly stuff here. Yes, so anyway, um, so 10% of the litter value. So, you know, if you, let's say that the average litter for Frenchies is four puppies and those dogs are gonna sell for $5,000 a piece, that would mean that that would be a $20,000 litter Then I think a $2,000 stud fee would be appropriate. Less to get started because you haven't proven the dog yet. Look, if you're not getting any customers, it doesn't matter what you're charging, you're getting zero money. So you might as well drop your price to prove your dog to get people interested so that you can show what your dog produces. So reduce the price to start with. How much should it be? As much as it takes to get people on board. So that all depends on your reputation, the dog that you're offering, what the stud fee's gonna be, how well you are at marketing it, how good you are at taking photographs. There's lots of variables here. But, but look, you can set any stud fee you want. If you're getting zero studs, it doesn't make a difference to you because you're getting zero dollars. So reduce the price to start with, get people interested and go from there. There's uh, Ariel Corpus. There are so many people selling puppies with floppy ears because they think it's animal cruelty to take the ears out. I have no idea why it'd be animal cruelty. It's not, but that's just ridiculous. Any, any tips on getting puppies sold in a tiny manner? As a first litter, well, now you ask something about ears. I don't know what that's about. Tape up the ears, but now you ask about how do you sell puppies. I've got a course on this. It's called The Secrets of Selling Puppies. I would suggest that you go to breeder101.com and buy the course. Uh, so someone's saying here the dog game has completely plummeted. Well, it's certainly dropped, but it's not plummeted. I mean, not for me anyway. So, you know, this is all about being responsive to this. Look, the prices that we saw when COVID was going on, those prices were ludicrous and not sustainable. So don't get wrapped up on this idea that whatever puppies were selling for when COVID was going on, 2019, 20, that those are the current prices of dogs, because they're not. Those prices went up like crazy and they've come back down. And they've taken a dip down below what's normal. I think they're coming back up. But you know, it, it is what it is. And it's all about producing really nice looking dogs with good pedigrees, being very responsive to your customers, being good at marketing, taking good photographs, and all of those things together will make you more successful in what you're doing. So, So somebody's asking, Roxanne Michel is asking about enemas, so you insert it inside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't squirt it on the floor. We're talking about taking a syringe with some soapy warm water and blowing it up a puppy's butt. You've got to put the tip into the anus a little bit and just gently squeeze and the water will come back out, or some of it may not, but then maybe water and boot comes out later. But you've got to get it in the dog. You can't just squirt it from a distance, it will not go in the butt. Lawrence Labee says, I keep telling people Mando is my favorite working stud right now. He's mine too, thank you, appreciate that. <laughs> oh dear, Coupon Honey talking about uh, taping ears up. Oh, oh, fixing a dog's hematoma. Wish I'd known about this before. I paid for surgery and now one ear won't stand up. Yes, right. So yeah, I mean, last, the last question here. Look, if you've got a dog with a hematoma, drain it tape it up, well, that's it. If you just drain it, it'll fill back up with blood and eventually you'll end up with this cauliflower ear, the ear that's all crumpled up and looks like crap. It doesn't affect the dog, it's just a cosmetic thing, but it just doesn't look good. And uh, nobody want, everybody wants to have the prettiest dog they can. And so there's no excuse for not taking care of this. If you just drain it, I promise you, nine times out of 10, it's just gonna fill back up again and you're back where you started. So. I'm not sure what the surgery you had done, but I have never, ever not been able to fix this. And, and I've never had a dog that didn't have its ears stand up either. So go follow the, what I did in that video, it works. And there we go. Encourage me Bye. to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Come on, man.